Well, guys, we're uh, about a week removed when I joined down the phone to talk about this incredible Archego story. Uh, of course, the reason behind that amazing run up we talked about virtually every day and shares of the likes of Viacom and Discovery. There were other stocks as well, Chinese related companies, Tencent Music, a couple of others that also he owned significantly. But the reverberations from the story is still ongoing. In particular, uh, the scrutiny is going to put on the swap market or the total return swaps that are offered by uh, investment banks through their prime brokerage to family offices and hedge funds such as Archegos. Um, and whether there's going to be a need for more transparency, it really is incredible to look at Viacom shares now up 19 percent for the year. Of course, they had been over 100 percent higher, more than that even at their height of what 101, I think, was sort of the the, the high for the stock. They sold all that stock at 85, much of it common. Uh, and that was in part sort of the downfall there, uh, having brought it down. Again, we didn't understand Archegos was such an enormous owner of this company stock. The New York Times reporting may have owned as much as 20 billion worth of stock, which even at its height would have represented close to 40 percent of the market cap. But this was unknown to those who were shorting the stock. It was unknown to those who were buying the stock. It was unknown to everybody, even to the prime brokers that had the swaps on with Archegos because they didn't know how many other Prime brokers around the, uh, the street were also had the same trade on, essentially allowing Mr. Wang to have uh, acts to have the economic uh, performance of Viacom stock. Why, Jim, anybody would want to own 30 or 40 percent of the market cap of this company, from, even from a risk management perspective, is still a key question. We don't know the answer to it. Uh, what we do know is that Viacom has returned to levels that many would argue are more at least based on the underlying fundamentals of the company at this point. Um, as has Discovery as well. I mean, he, Jim, I think was the, in the total return swap market, he was by far the largest single player without a doubt. Well, I, I think people have to know first that when you do those uh, kind of off board transactions, the, the commissions are amazing. Uh, so in some ways, you do want to look the other way. JP Morgan was not willing to look the other way, didn't want to deal his, with his business. Uh, also found his character may be uh, called into question. Remember, he had been convicted of insider trading. David, what I found amazing is, is that he used multiple uh, prime brokers. So they really didn't know. Each, none of these I actually had a read on the other ones, is what I can tell. Um, because these things were all off board. I also think owning that much stock, it reminded me, David, was he like trying to do a personal GameStop? I mean, did he see the shorts he wanted to I break them? I don't know. He was a personal he was game stuff. To, it was like a Ryan to, Cohen he game to, stock. <laughs> he was trying to corner the market in Viacom. You like, know, it was like Viacom. the Brothers with silver. It's like, I want every share. I'm going to own every share. Paramount Nobody's going to Plus? Know. I mean, it, 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 I, I, yeah, Tony I, Romo? I, again, we continue to have questions here because it was so unusual. Uh, and if there was more transparency in this market where you actually knew who was behind these trades... Um, you would have known the risk. And many of those who were shorting the stock would have had a better understanding of why it kept going up. Uh, and right. so there is a, certainly a large argument to be made here, Jim. And we may see it. And we know the SEC is taking a look at this, but we may see an outcome of this, that there is going to be uh, more transparency in this swap market, especially given the risk that was undertaken by the firms as well. We saw the Nomura loss of $2 billion. We don't know what the loss is going to be at Credit Suisse, but we, according to Bloomberg, they are now, uh, there are some questions about their chief risk officer and whether um, she is going to be able to continue with that firm. So we're still seeing the fallout from this. And, of course, we haven't heard anything from the man behind it all at Archegos. No, he did say it was a challenging court, Dave. Yes. Yeah, a challenging. <laughs> yeah. Well, i got to use that word. Yeah. I mean, because I think it really captures perfectly uh, – how challenging it was. Hey, Carl, one thing that did happen, if you go back to the tape of our show, every day there was this moment where, where uh, David would say, by the way, Viacom's up again. And I would be like, it was almost like it was his personal GameStop too. I mean, David, you're like um, Wall Street favor. And, and I just think it was just, made, that's an <laughs> illusion at best. It, there made, it made no sense, Carl, because we, we just didn't, no none of the other guys were moving up that much. And as much as I love Bob Backish, because I got this stock wrong, I do think that owning 40% of in swaps is the type of thing where the government has to say, look, you've got to make these swap deals much more public. And I have market access on tonight. They don't do, you know, they should be doing the swaps. Carl, there's a way to make this stuff very, very public. I remember doing some swaps when I was, you know, I 
very minor league in this market. But you got gaffed typically. You, you knew that you had to get a big, you knew that they had to give a big, big. Um, but uh, if you were to be public about these things and everything had to be in market access, then I think that what would happen is this would never have happened, Carl. And this is a bit of a travesty. When I think the SEC ought to say, look, uh, swaps from now on, got to make them public. And I think, Carl, that would really change a lot because that's how you get away with this craziness. Uh, that was exactly uh, Senator Warren's point, Jim. Uh, opaque derivatives, dark pools, unregulated hedge funds, a trader who wriggled out from uh, under the claw of the SEC. Uh, we're going to see what kind of implications it has for regulation uh, down the road, uh, for sure. Shepard Smith here. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube.